So I was holding off on bolting the intake down because you have to get right here to bolt the transmission up. So it makes it a little easier with the intake off. I mean, you can still get in here, I guess, and crank, but it just, it's a little easier with that open. And that means I was holding off on bolting it down, gaskets, uh, uh, injectors, which I now have, uh, fuel rails, measuring lines. Like there was a bunch, you know, a couple things that I was holding off right here because of transmission, which I was holding off on the transmission going in because of the torque converter. I don't have a torque converter yet, but I'm thinking we're gonna go ahead and put transmission in without a torque converter again. That way I can continue on with lines and everything. And then when we get the torque converter, I'll take it to the shop, uh, to Mike's side and throw it on the lift. And then me and Mike will just slide the torque, uh, the transmission back and put a torque converter in it and set the gap on the torque converter and all that. But so I was out here and I was like, man, how about if it was an easier way to get them top bolts on that transmission? Or if you ever need to get in there to get that uh, sensor or anything. So now I can easily access both of them bolts. Uh, that bolt's just in there for mock-up. That sensor's right there. There's the top, uh, or there's where the transmission goes and everything. So you can see, you know, a lot of stuff from up here if you ever have to service anything. You'd obviously be probably working on it from down below, but if you needed another set of hands up top, um, you know, somebody could come right in here under the dash and definitely get inside there. I mean, you can see, you know, everything back here. So that's pretty nice. And I'm just gonna line it out with uh, the door edge protector. And that way you don't cut your hand up and I'm gonna build an aluminum plate that screws on over top of it. But figured I'd go ahead and knock that out tonight. Uh, you know, that way I can go ahead and throw the transmission in and it makes it easier too. If you need to actually put some torque on it, uh, it's a straight shot through here with an extension where you can get to them top bolts. So pretty, pretty stoked about that. Cause that's one thing that I was dreaded. That I wish I would have planned for, uh, when I originally built the car, but it wasn't bad at all. I drilled a couple of holes with a drill bit that was the same size of the jigsaw blade. And I actually just used the old trusty jigsaw and was able to get in there and make the turns and make the cuts and everything with the jigsaw so that worked out way easier than i thought because uh, i probably sat here for 20 minutes thinking about it got uh starting to put the injectors in and figure out the fuel line this line right here is going to go from this side to that side once i get everything uh, figured out working on uh, figuring out some fitting sizes right now and seeing what i need to order i've got to put the fuel pressure regulator in do have this billet unit that is going in then the injectors we got are these injector dynamics um actually bought them off of Eric from TKM. So working on doing them, these are what these are. So that's the injectors that we are going with for right now. Uh, he said they should be good up to about the 1200 horsepower range before they, before um, they max out. So this car, that should be right on the money for about what this car makes. And as soon as that 1200 maxes out on this thing, we're gonna need to change a whole bunch of stuff probably. So. Uh, we're shooting to build it for about 1200 and then after that it would probably be a major uh, switch up of changing stuff so that's all i'm got going on tonight i went ahead and uh, bolted this down finally the kit that i bought i've actually misplaced or don't have the bolts for back here so i'm guessing they're longer ones that go all the way down through here um so i have to address that need to get to i'm guessing the hardware store and get some longer bolts for them um but yeah right now just figuring out the uh fuel rails and the fuel lines um capped off the vacuum ports on the bottom of the intake for right now don't know if i'll need them or not i just went ahead and put caps on them if i do need them they're not hard to get your hand underneath there you know they're underneath here right there and you know take these off get these off so that you know you can hook up whatever um just trying to start some final uh 
you know, pieces that I haven't actually touched because uh, I'm just now getting to this stage. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. This is a learn as I go because I have no clue about any of this stuff. But thankfully, a couple people that I do know that know know something um, are nice enough to help me out. So yeah. All right, so we are going to throw this heavy thing back in here. We are back jack stand racing today. <sighs> Man, I'm not looking forward to this. That thing is heavy, dude. I have took it in and out. I don't know how many times by myself. So the plan now is basically to put it back in the car, and um, that way I can continue ordering lines and hooking stuff up and getting everything right. I'm going to get this thing underneath here and manhandle this thing up in um up into the car so this sucks but let's get at it Originally, this transmission come with the bell house and come with the Allen bolt heads. I switched these top two over to um, normal hex heads to make it simple. But now that I have this access hole, it really wouldn't be a bad to, idea to put the Allen heads back. However, I think I'm gonna leave it 17 just in case you ever wanna get it out. Of course, they're not lining up. No, that one is. That's a, that's a pain in the butt, I'm glad that's over with. That thing won't be coming back out until we get the torque converter. And then when that comes back out, we will fix the uh, mid plate clearance hole issues. And um, we'll put the torque, torque converter in and all that. So this allows us to go ahead and continue uh, figuring out where all the lines and everything else goes. All right, so put the dipstick in but I cannot get that thing to sit all the way down in there to save my life I think I just don't have enough of uh strength I think I'm a weakling but uh Mike if you're watching this you're gonna be manhandling this in there you need to go ahead and get ready so that's it transmission's back in uh cross members back in whenever me and Mike go do the torque converter and put that in we're gonna have to hilly cool this one because I didn't do that I'd rather just do that at the shop uh, we need to set the dipstick down and then we'll take the pan off and mark the, uh, the correct fluid level. I've seen people talking about how important it is on these universal dipsticks to make sure you pull the pan and actually look at the uh, dipstick level and mark it so you have an accurate thing. You don't want to go down in there good. I bent the tip. I bent the tip of it to try to make it go down better, but it still wants to, it still wanted to fight with me. So I just mounted it right there on the firewall. Nothing fancy like everybody else does. But transmission's back in it and I'm just going down the list of trying to put stuff together and seeing what I'm missing. Uh, I'm realizing that even though I've done more mock-up on a lot of this stuff, I've lost uh, more hardware, more bolts. So definitely gonna have to be got. So I'm gonna keep moving down the list. So while I'm doing the transmission, I need to get the uh, transmission cable from the shifter down under the car. I haven't done that yet but I wanted to uh, pull the seat out so I could drill the hole. And I wanted to just show y'all how the seat was mounted in case anybody's wondering about that since I'm trying to document this whole entire car. So it's got these button screws on it right here that are star uh, bit or Torx heads, whatever you like to call them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, they're right there. And then they go through a lot of times into the back. So I'm gonna take them out and then I'll show y'all the brackets that I had 
uh, built to mount them in case anybody else wanting to do it in a Ford Maverick Mercury Comet and mount some Kirkies or uh, carbon fiber seats like this because these are full carbon seats. Uh, let me get these out and then I'll show y'all. We'll go ahead and pull the pin and on my pin i actually went ahead on my door pins if you have swing out bars and actually made these wires that go around the cage so you can't ever lose your pins so you can just pull it and the pins hanging right there i do have swing outs on it because it's not supposed to go that fast all right so take and tuck our belt in there and these seats are stupid light and there they go come out just like that Okay, so what I've done, these are my brackets that I made. Uh, these are powder coated. I powder coated them at the shop. Like I said, I do uh, powder coat for myself, just not for others. Um, this bottom bracket I made, this is just a uh, right angle um, aluminum. The top's right angle aluminum split, uh, bent to match the contour of the seat. And then there's bolts through them, uh, Tennerman clips. Everybody that I've been messing that up on and has been correcting me, y'all be proud of me for that. Tenorman clips, if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Now I'm probably, now I'm probably, if I'm pronouncing it right, now I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Uh, of course, Harper has a million nuts and bolts in the car that don't go in the car. Uh, she's bad about dragging them. But there's, so the other bracket's taller, whereas this one is shorter. So on this side, you don't need, you can see the length of that one over there. This one, you don't need it quite as much. But basically, these across the board are uh, equal left to right. So, and actually Harper didn't, she only had two under there. These actually went to the back ones back here because I didn't order Tenderman clips that were long enough to go in there. So this side has them, this side, you still gotta put your hand under there or hold it with a wrench um, to put them in. Man, I was drilling something. Oh, center console almost when I was drilling the center console. So yeah, then uh, they're just bolted in on that side with Tenderman clips also. So they're pretty easy. It takes just a, you know, a minute to get the seat out. And then the back, uh, we ordered these clamps off eBay, welded this to them. And then uh, uh, I fabbed up these little brackets right here and Mike, uh, Mike welded these up. So this is for the backrest, just to keep the seat from going forward and backwards. Um, you know, it, it's, it's plenty. So, um, but you can adjust these too, because this one has three has three adjustment holes, a hole, a hole, and a hole down there. If you wanted to cut some of that off, you could adjust this, but that's exactly where they need to be. So that's how the seats are mounted in there. So I've got my transmission cable right here, and it's not the longest in the world. So I'm thinking about just actually hitting a hole right here. That way, basically, this thing dives, this cable dives straight down under the car and into the transmission. So this center console, I went over, I think, no, I haven't went over the interior yet in this car. So I'm not even gonna spool that. You gotta stay on the lookout for the center console or the interior video on this car if you wanna know what the center console came out of. But I'm gonna get this hole drilled, get this cable ran underneath the car and um, we'll get this transmission hopefully hooked up to the actual shifter now. So, and the bolts that I use to bolt the seat in are these button head bolts. So they have this uh, smooth part that's about the thickness of the carbon and it's a button head so you, it doesn't hurt you when you're sitting on it because I don't run pads or nothing like that. We ran the cable under there so it's hanging out below the car and I actually ran it in a perfect spot that goes actually right here beside the seat. So it actually just runs down right there beside the seat in this little uh, hump up. This is a hump from the factory right here pumps up and so I'll go under the car and show you. So it was perfect just to dive it in like that into it. So we got all that hooked up, nothing interesting uh, here at all. It's pretty common sense how you hook up a shift link cable. Um, got it just running right here. Obviously we need to zip tie it to this or make some little mount for it to run through. 
maybe over here I might actually make a uh, drill a hole and put a uh, cable hold on that and then it just runs through the floor right there it shouldn't move around so it shouldn't cut the cable I shouldn't have nothing to worry about with that right there but that's that little indention I was talking about in the floor where the cable comes through let me show you what else we got going on All right, and so uh, this is our piece that we cut out of our transmission tunnel. So we need to make a patch panel to go over it. That way when we're done with everything, uh, when we're done with everything, we can have a, uh, a cover. So this is what I made up. I haven't screwed it in yet. So that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna go just like that, okay, over everything. I'm either gonna put Phillips screws or I'll probably go ahead and drill it for some nut certs actually. That way the bottom of the car doesn't have screws sticking out underneath it. And uh, that way there's just nut certs sticking out so you don't cut your hand up if you ever have to stick your hand up underneath there. So a little piece of advice on making a patch panel like this. Obviously you got your piece cut out. If you don't, if it's boogered all up, then you know make it out of masking tape or cardboard. But all I did was take my piece, lay it out like you've seen, I went half an inch past it because I obviously want overlap enough to screw it um, down or either rivet it. I don't want to rivet it because I don't want to have to drill it out. I'll honestly, I mean, I really just want to use Phillips screws, but we'll see. Anyway, just thinking out loud. Um, cut that out. Uh, grind wheel your edges, grind your edges and everything, and then curve it to the shape of your piece. All I did is literally you can just take it like this, put this piece on here, and then turn this. No, yeah like this put this piece on top and then i literally just turned it and rolled this on the table until i got basically the same contour um then what you want to do is obviously want to get a little edge a bell around the edge there are actually really nice uh metal working tools to do this with and i do know how to do it i just don't have none of the tools so you have all kinds of stretchers shrinkers english wheels um you know pieces that you hammer the metal around to roll the edges like all kinds of technical stuff and i don't i'm not great with metal work and i just know what they are i don't know all the names but if you put me in the garage with them i can use a handful of them so all i did was just take it put it on the edge of the bench and just took me a rubber mallet and just kind of rolled around the edge roll it a little and then you can take your vise open it up enough to get in there like this and just walk it around basically like this okay as you're curving it you know, just keep walking around and bending the edges, okay? Just keep rolling your edges like this all the way around, and that is gonna straighten your curve out, so you'll have to go back and reshape your curve, but that's a good way to get a uh, bevel around the edges between your vise or that. And if you have something that has a curved edge that's hard, even possibly the face of this, you know, you could hammer that like that, but it just don't have the bend that I want, so. I just went and walked it around like this. I might put probably put some foam tape or something around this. Maybe, maybe not, uh, just to help seal it up. Pro probably, I probably should put some foam tape at least around it before I install it. I got some really thin stuff. Um, but again, I'm probably gonna nut cert it, even though I really just wanna put Phillips screws through it. But I know I'm gonna stick my hands out there for some reason at some point, and it's gonna piss me off when I get my hands cut all up with the Phillips screws. So I probably shouldn't do that. Or if I do, I need to make sure I use really short Phillips screws. But nut certs would obviously be more professional, but they take a little bit more work um, being I've got the interior all in the car getting up underneath the dash. Anyway, we're gonna wrap that up. For this one, that's gonna be it. Uh, it is Sunday afternoon. So uh, that was one video and this is a second video with uh, installing the transmission and all that for y'all. Um, got some cool stuff coming up ahead. We're taking this bag of goodies to the shop for tomorrow. Um, this is gonna be some oil line fittings and some burn down tubes. So I'm gonna go over with y'all how to make burn down tubes and uh, modify the MMR oil adapter for the Coyote um, in another video. We're gonna start working on that hopefully this week. Uh, we also have Randy's car that we're gonna finish up, but the burn down tubes are gonna come out right here. So I'm not gonna spoil it. Y'all will see it in another video, but we are putting burn down tubes with billet in connectors and everything on composite plastic uh, coyote valve covers, factory covers. 
So stay looking out for the video. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, smash that bell button because we're going to try to wrap up all of Randy's paint work this week on his. Uh, we're going to finish up the doors, trunk lid, um, hood is just going to go into primer until the uh, until the, the, the whole car is fitted together in case they have to cut it. But uh, I appreciate y'all. Everything y'all doing on this channel is growing at a slow, steady pace right now. Um, you know, and I hope it keeps growing. If y'all need any help, if you have any questions, if there's anything you need me to do a video on, just let me know because even if it's just especially for you, I'll do a short, uh, that's literally just for you and I'll post it, uh, to the channel. You know, if, if I think that it can help a lot of people out and if I can't easily just answer it in a question, um, in the comments. So again, thanks y'all for everything. I'm out.